Hi, I'm Dr. John Preston Perry, and today I'm talking about what are tests for infertility. Now, if you say that fertility mostly boils down to four things, sperm, eggs, tubes, uterus, you have to test each of those four things. So the first question is, what is the best test for sperm? And it's interesting. You can look at sperm, you know, just generally, uh, but you can have had a vasectomy and sperm looks almost unchanged to the naked eye from a person pre-vasectomy to post-vasectomy. So, you know, looking at it with a spouse or a friend or something on that scale, it's not going to change it. You have to look at it under a microscope. And this is called semen analysis. Now for semen analysis, and there are a lot of variables that are that people look at and they look at what is the volume what is the concentration what is the motility what is the shape and they'll have additional things for whether they're white blood cells and whether the ph is normal and whether there's agglutination which means clumped together there are all kinds of little things like that the most important is a metric called the total modal count which is the volume of the sperm times how concentrated it is, in other words, how many sperm are moving per, are there per milliliter, times the motility, how well do they move. And the total modal count is often between 60 and 80 million total modal sperm. And the World Health Organization's cutoff is about 15 million total modal sperm. Now, if you have fewer than 15. If you're at 14 and another guy's at 16, that doesn't mean you're abnormal and some other guy's completely normal. It's on a continuum. And so what you say is that it takes 10 million total modal sperm in an act of intercourse for one to find an egg. And so if a guy has 60 to 80 million total modal sperm, six to eight find an egg in a given month. And if there's 10 million, one finds an egg in a month. If there's a million, then it's once a year, roughly, that a sperm finds an egg. So this matters very much where the numbers are. But once you get above a certain threshold, it's not that radical of a shift, whether eight sperm found an egg or 10, for example. So we use that. And by the way, for morphology, we're moving a bit away from it. It's not to say that there can't be value to it, but there are a lot of guys with funny looking sperm that make very cute looking kids. So you want to really focus, most of the issues that arise for morphology will also show up in the total modal count. And many of the other things that people look at. So for instance, when you look for white blood cells, that's important to understand an infection. You want to be treated for that. But usually that's not the driving source or will define things. A lot of the information that's in the rest of a semen analysis ends up being things that just tell you why there's a problem and not simply that there is. But if you look at the total modal count, you can figure out a lot. Also important for the total modal count is it corrects for some of the lifestyle variation. If a guy has abstained from ejaculation for a month or two, there are a lot of dead sperm that will have built up. And so while the absolute count of sperm looks high, the motility is very low because a lot of them have outlived their shelf life. So you are looking more for uh, something that's been, had two to five days of abstinence. Similarly, you'll see some guys before semen analysis, they'll have done a practice round the night before or the morning of. They come in, there's not much for the counts there, but the motility is through the roof because it's very fresh. You really want that two to five days. And again, the total modal count can help offset some of this, but the goal is more the two to five days. Now, there are other things that people are looking at for sperm tests. DNA fragmentation indices are one of the more common ones, but again, really the DNA fragmentation indices sometimes will tell you to run an extra gradient to clear up sperm before insemination or IVF, or might say there's a swim up method uh, that can help reduce that. But the real thing is, unless you're using someone else's sperm, it's not going to radically shift um, what you end up doing. So you want to remove oxidative stress in general, avoid smoking, avoid you know, heavy drinking, uh, ultimately be well for its own sake. But at the same time, again, these are not likely to radically shift the management. Similarly, CASA, which is computer-assisted semen analysis, people pay a lot of money for it. 
it's like building a better mousetrap. Maybe you might get 1% more, but it's not likely to radically shift where most people are. So I think if you can figure out what your total modal count is and make sure it's in a reasonable range, that's 60 to 80 million, don't panic if you're at 30. If you start getting in the 15 though, and you know, 20, obviously that's it. the lower you get, the more cause there is for concern, but recognize it's on a continuum. Similarly, use the semen analysis to know that your numbers may double from one month and be cut in half another, depending on whether there's a cold or some other circumstances. So the numbers can fluctuate. But at the same time, the semen analysis is the backbone for effectively understanding male infertility and everything else has more to do with why if a problem is identified. And by the way, again, for any questions, post them here, or subscribe to us and follow us. Um, we love to answer as much as we can.